What's up, YouTube? It's Dubby, and this is a weekend league gameplay. I was actually playing with Raw Dogs 92 overall team. Thank you to him for helping me with this weekend league. I had to save mine for another day of streaming, so I decided to use his team. Probably the best team you could possibly have at every position. As you can see, my homie's over the crib today. We was just chilling, drinking, talking. My buddy was in for a big wedding, so all our friends were in town, so they came by to kick it with me so as you can see I, I was drinking all night so i really wasn't all the way locked in on madden but having a good time streaming like i said raw dog's team is ridiculous he has pretty much every player ronnie lott obviously there's rod woodson michael vick every moss everybody powered up his team is dumb so i'm playing this guy uh lou got game i don't know who it is but this was a good game and it showed you how to how i use clock management game went by really fast he played good defense, though. Trying a little contain blitz out of, uh, I think, that big nickel right there he got to me. I think that's Ted Hendricks just hurtling over people. Gets me to a fourth down early. We're able to go ahead and hit this comeback route right here. Boom, to Tim Brown. I actually tried to pitch it and picked it back up. Like I said, I was drinking a lot. Couple brews, couple hennies in the chat, and then I'm starting to pitch the ball all over the place. Want to have fun, and that's what I did tonight. Playing with this team and playing with my homies over was was pretty cool. Well, here we go, underneath hit Le'Veon Bell. Double spin them up real quick. Every bit of this offense is in New Orleans offense. The link below is to purchase this ebook. If you see anything you like, see anything you want to be able to do, if you want to win weekend league games, you need this offense in your life. So this was the first drive, pretty much underneath right there, Tim Brown. I tried to pitch it again, and luckily I'm goofing off, and, and Lane Johnson picks it up, gets it in the end zone. Boom, right there. We hit the little baby dot. So I believe that's Julio Jones. Julio Jones. With the touchdown catch, Diamond Julio Jones. So we went down the field fairly easy the first drive. So many completions, we almost took the whole first quarter away from So that's good. Let's put some pressure back on him for him to be able to go ahead and get some points here. And first set, he comes out in a split close. Obviously, this is popular offense in man early in the year. And that's what he's running over here. He dumps it off. Tyree Kill, got to respect the speed. But if you don't let him get started, he can't burn you. Scream at him again. Actually, able to come back and tipped off the... Picked off the tipped pass with my user. Floated up in there right in the middle of the field. Great play by me and Sean Taylor. Tried to go up top to Randy Moss, and Vic overthrows it. Take the short one. He's wide open. Well, there he goes. He gets me with a little contained. He switched his defense up. He was running that big nickel. Now, for the rest of the game, he's just DB fire. Straight DB fire. Able to hit a laser there to Tim Brown over the middle. That's Tim Brown upgrade. We have Tim Brown, Randy Moss, and Julio Jones, I believe, are my receivers. You know, Michael Vick getting loose. He held on to the ball. Normally, my Michael Vick puts the thing on the ground, but he held on there. And I, is that the Marcus Ware? Oh, Cameron Jordan just dominating. Gets me to a third and long. Michael Vick scramble. Can I get it? You know I was drinking, so we're getting crazy. <laughs> Should have fumbled again with Sheesh. All right, well, I'll take my three. Go up two scores. Go up two scores in a game. Obviously, we talked about this. If you watch my videos, it's huge. It's just so relaxing defensively. And he's in split close now. So now I know I can run dollar against this. I can really slow him down. Right now, I think that's J.J. Watt. Just doesn't fight. He's able to hit the playmaker. That's why, I mean, I love J.J. Watt. I love, you know, the, the big D lineman. But sometimes you want speed. And speed really helps, really, at all positions. And here he hits a wheel route. Bang. And Ricky Williams goes down the field in two plays. Playmaker plays and over my hard flats. I was playing cover three hard flats both times. And, and you know, the sideline over the hard flat hurt me. But like I was saying, you want some speed on your D-line because when they do disengage, man, they can get after the quarterback that much faster. You know, it saves you a second. If you have 85, I mean, Clowney is 85 speed and wear. That's who I use. 85 speed and I believe 83 speed. 84 with Sprinter on wear. And uh, there we go. He's getting present. Cameron Jordan might be on the team right now the way he's killing me. But like I said, the speed really helps you uh, get after the quarterback once they disengage and Watt doesn't have that. Here we go again. Another drive. Another sack, man. They're just killing me. Actually stops me, makes me punt the ball. I'll punt. The, make sure you get the ball to the sideline, right there. Only give him one spot to go. Great punt. Actually, get him back to midfield from where I was at. That's a real good punt. Here he goes, rolling out with Michael Vick, and instead of scrambling, he decides to chuck it. He was at past the line, but you know Malcolm Jenkins is the best safety in this game right now. Malcolm Jenkins, primetime performer, powered up. I actually have Sprinter on him. He has 87 speed. He has been the best DB I play with. What I want you guys to do is comment below on who is the best DB you guys have played with. Because for me, without a question of a doubt, it's been Malcolm Jenkins. Here we go. Not much, not too much time left. You know, I got a timeout, but really just not enough time. So, you know, we got to chuck it to Randy, right? Got to. He actually picks it off, but Randy makes the tackle. Ends the half. 
I'm feeling good. I like playing against split close, man. I really do. I like defending it. I think a lot of people run it that aren't that good. And, you know, I feel like it's easy to stop them, easy to get them to throw uh, incompletions and, and turnovers, hopefully. Like I said, and that's something that in my defensive ebook I break down kind of my philosophy and how I defend each, you know, formation. Not necessarily what blitzes the run. I have some of that stuff in there, obviously, but I really want you guys to be able to know what I think when I play defense against split close is one of the popular formations, and I'll show you guys what I do to bag that. Harry Pops a run actually surprised me. I really blow up the run on a split close good. But when they surprised me, I wasn't ready for it. Nice run by him. Nice baby dot. Taking was underneath. Just wrap up and tackle. Rod Woods in there. I'm actually using an Amos, I think, right there. Now I go bag and run up. Get him to a third and 30 runs again. I shoot the gap. Let's just fight. Rod Woodson fought for me. Made the tackle. Here he goes. No huddle. And if you watch videos before, man, no huddle. I like to switch the man in short yardage situations. They're not used to it. I've been blitzing, 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 blitzing. So come down, man coverage, obviously, and he blocks everybody, which is what I want. There's only three receivers on the route, and I'm pretty sure everybody got open. I mean, I used it the other side. I was waiting for more of a breaking post right to left. Obviously, I should stay more over there on the right side. And uh, he was able to hit that dot. Nice pop by him. Over there, he gets it over Amos. Amos being short kind of hurt me there. We're just not getting any pressure. My guys aren't fighting. Whew, we need that pick right there. Rob Woodson got to turn around and go get that. J.J. Watt over here just getting beasted. We finally get Bruce Smith, get some pressure, and get him to throw the ball away. That's intentional grounding. The game is really strict on intentional grounding this year. Great call by him here to run the ball. I mean, it's such a smart play because it secured his field goal. He could have got sacked, knocked out of field goal range, or even an incompletion there. He might have been out of field goal range because of the penalty. Smart play to run and go ahead and tie the game up. You know, he guaranteed himself a field goal, and that's what he wanted. Tie game. Here we go. Now it's my time. I can take a lot of this time off the clock, man. The game is mine. Able to boom right here. Hit the comeback route to Julio Jones. Break a tackle and actually lose more yards than I should have. It was only eight yard completion. Should have been more. Here I am hitting the post right here to you. Guess who? Randy Moss. Must have player, obviously, on everybody's team. Underneath we hit it once again. Randy Moss. Quick drag. Like I said he, he runs deep fast, but he also runs drags fast. So now we're just trying to use some clock. We It'd be hard to take the whole game, but we can take the majority of it. Here we go, hitting a slant over here to Julio Jones. Can't be guarded. Moss, Julio Jones, and Tim Brown are really killer. Blows my draw up right there, and he actually uses a timeout. Here I go, just want to get the completion, stay in bounds, and I pretty much throw it out of bounds here. Just a terrible play because it saves him a timeout. It stops the clock. Almost better just running and, and making sure that he uses the timeouts or we take more time off the clock. That's what I do here on 3rd and 14. Pretty much just, you know, surrender. Like, okay, fine. I'm going to take my field goal. And sometimes you got to realize that, not necessarily on 3rd down, but really even on 1st down. Sometimes it's okay getting a field goal if you take the amount of time off the clock that you need to. And I cost myself at least 19 seconds and a time, another time out of his. So if I would have ran the ball or at least completed something in bounds on that play, we'd be sitting around. He'd either have one timeout or we'd be sitting around 1 minute and 30 seconds left. Instead, it's 150, and he has two timeouts. But that's okay. He starts with an inside zone. A lot of people do that first first play of money drive, see what you can get on the ground. He got a good gain right there. I didn't like that. Wasn't happy about how much he got there. Here, uh, I think that's Tyler Eifert ran right by my face. Tried to strip him, didn't get it. So two quick plays by him. I'm getting a little flustered. But it's okay. The worst-case scenario is that, that we go to overtime here. Can't give up any big plays. Got to focus. The, the time is on my side. He still has those two timeouts, and he's able to hit a dot, but Ronnie Lott at linebacker just crushes number 80. I don't know who that is. He crushed him. Here he goes. I play cover three, sneak it in, and his, late was, his read was so late right there. Missed the wide open corner route. Would have been a first down, so here we go. Back to fourth down. Earlier in the game, I audible to two man under. I tried to sneak man in on him. Didn't work. That cover three just gave him too much time, so you know I got a blitz on fourth down pretty much. I mean, we... We can't be afraid. We're not going to win this game if we play afraid. That's pretty much how I'm thinking right now. We're going to go ahead and bring these two corners off the edge. Deep blue Amos in the middle to stop verticals. And he runs the same play he did last time. No quick reads for him. Sack lunch. GG's in the chat. That'll end the game. Like I said, I mean, mixed it up on defense down there at the end. Pretty much played between cover three and cover two most of the game. Always make it look like you're going to blitz because that way they're always afraid of the blitz. If there's just the threat of the blitz, it just adds so much more to you defensively. If you like this video, please hit the like button below. 
Comment. I asked you, comment on who you think is the best DB in the game so far. For me, it's Malcolm Jenkins, followed closely by my guy, Pat Pete. And I said, I hope you like these videos. I'm going to keep pushing them out. I just got over 10,000 subs on YouTube. I really appreciate you guys watching all these videos and putting up with them. Nerd!